Today on the channel, it's time for some pro tips. I talk about my displays, what they are, how I keep them clean, how I set them up for success, and all kinds of other pro tips. Welcome everyone, Kyle here and welcome back to the channel. Today, we have kind of video B. Let's say my huge collection tour is uh, video A. This would be video B, and this is where a lot of the explanation comes through. Uh, I wanted to make that display tour as quick as possible. I know attention spans aren't going to be there for two hours of a display tour, but I thought instead of talking about it during the display tour, I'd do a separate video for those that are interested out there of how I set myself up for success, let's call it. Uh, what do I do for my displays, all that. And today on the channel here, we're going to talk about what I use for stands for figures. And this is my whole collection. I use different stuff for different things. We'll talk about each one. So what do I use for stands? What do I use for display units? What kind of lighting do I use? What kind of risers do I use for my figures? How do I keep things clean? Uh, dioramas, my Marvel uh, Legends dioramas, stuff like that. We'll talk about that. And we're also going to talk about any other notes, and I'm sure I'll think of some things uh, along the way. So I wanted to do this video for everybody out there. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, at SirPaul64, and Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. Like I said on Instagram, all kinds of tips, tricks, figure hunting news, figure hunting uh, tips, you name it out there. Follow me on social media to stay abreast of it all, and of course subscribe to this channel. But let's get into it. We're going to do it by category, like I said. And I figure no better place to start than with display stands. And let's start right behind me. Let's talk about the Detolfs. As you guys are probably well aware, and some of you guys maybe are not. What are these glass cabinets behind me? They come from the store called Ikea. I'm sure you guys have all heard of Ikea. Uh, one thing for me is the nearest Ikea for me is three hours away. So it's a six hour round trip. So you know how many times I've made that trip in my life? It's ridiculous. So for those of you guys that have Ikeas within walking or driving distance, consider yourself very lucky. But these are Detolfs from Ikea. Uh, they run about 50, 60 bucks, I think something like that, a case. Really versatile, well, versatile as in uh, for glass casing, they're probably your best bet, cheapest bet, easily, easiest to find bet. Uh, COVID, there's been issues trying to get uh, stock at all the stores. But day-to-day, uh, -day, normal wear, this is probably the easiest because you can go to some display case stores and stuff, and you're going to pay thousands of dollars for a display case. These are really cool. They can be hacked a little bit, but for the most part, you got three glass shelves and then a base, so you got four shelves to work with. And uh, that's what they are. So they're really cool. I like them a lot. I think I'm up to like 27, 28 of them now. Um, so there it is. They're IKEA Detolf display cases. They come in black, brown color, which I prefer. They also come in a white. Older ones used to come in like a honey oak type color. Um, so that was those. But then everybody always says, Kyle, why are your Detolfs off the ground? What are they standing on? Well, First off, I keep them off the ground because they look so much cleaner. You guys have seen my collection and you've seen people that have them on the floor. Nothing against those people, but I don't like them on the floor because, hey, somebody's walking by, let's say it's on a hardwood floor or even a carpeted floor, there's some give, some movement to it that could shake and rattle it, all that kind of fun stuff. I also like, I don't like the height of the Detolfs. I wish they had one more cube higher, and by getting them off the ground, that uh, gets the perfect eye level look for them. Uh, I just find that to be a much cleaner and more appealing look for me. I mean, it's simple as that. And your mileage may vary. Maybe you like them on the floor, and if you do, that's fine. But I just think it looks cleaner that way. But then I use Calex shelving, Calex cube shelving from Ikea as well as the base. And I can fit three Detolfs, about three and a half Detolfs on each one. And I wrap the display around, put them on those Calex, and guess what? Then you got storage potential down below your Detolf. And I got a little bit of storage on top of my Detolfs where I put box figures, stuff like that. So I really like that setup. It's worked the best for me. Believe you me, we'll talk about it a lot, but you got to work your plan on your displays. Don't do it kamikaze style. Don't be the bull in the china shop. Think of your vision. Think of your space. What do you want to do? What are you hoping to accomplish? And that's exactly what I did here. Uh, I've talked about it before on the channel. When I bought this house, I said, hey, I need to find a house that has... Uh, either brand new or it has a blank blueprint that I can invent my basement how I want it. And that's exactly what I did. Not everybody can do that. Not everybody is that fortunate to find, you know, that kind of house living situation where, hey, I can design 
around my collection, but that's what I did. And it worked out pretty good for me. I enjoy it a lot and I don't want to ever move. Hopefully I never have to move because I can't imagine I'm going to be calling in the viewers to come help me move. It'll be quite the day. But I really do like the cabinets here and I uh, designed, like I said, my collection, my room around this collection here. Uh, the Calyx shelves are really great on the bottom, so you can have storage down there for, you know, ringside cases, display case, uh, paraphernalia, cleaner, all kinds of stuff. You can display whatever you want down below in the cases. But the Calyx cube shelves, very versatile. They come in all different sizes at Ikea. They come in big units, small units, two cubes, four cubes, you name it. These are four cube ones, but then everybody says, well, the Calyx don't look like that. They don't have doors on them. But if you look at Ikea, you can accessorize your Calyx shelves any way you want. There's uh, doors like I put on there for them. There's shelving, there's baskets, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, I use the doors. I think it makes it look cleaner. As we keep talking about trying to keep it clean, trying to not just look like a, a hodgepodge mess. I want to try to keep it clean and like a museum. Maybe if that, I don't know if it's quite museum clean, but that's what I'm going for. A clean approach, a nice visual appealing approach, and I feel the doors really add to that. But say you got stuff you want to store away, and like that's where I store a lot of my display stuff and some of the cleaning supplies and things. Underneath, out of the way, gives you great storage. Uh, old boxes, if you want to keep some boxes for your figures, you can store them right there. So that's what I do there. So Calyx shelves on the bottom with the added door inserts. Uh, you know, all, all in, they're a little expensive when you start adding the door inserts, but I always say do it right the first time or don't do it at all. Uh, don't do something you're not going to be happy with because what you're going to do is a year or two years later, you're going to replace it. Uh, you know, save money, always be thinking, work your plan, work your vision. Easy as that. Now, that goes for a lot of things in life. Work your plan, work your vision. Every day at work, you should have a vision of here's what I'm going to complete. Here's my future goals. Stuff like that. I'm not telling you guys probably anything you don't know. <clears throat> So there's that. So the details are on that. And then my other favorite is Billy Bookcases. Another Ikea staple, probably their most popular item, come in all different colors. I prefer white for collections. Uh, if you're a toy collector, definitely get white shelving. Uh, I've been burned. Uh, I always say do it right the first time. I didn't do it right the first time. And uh, it took me, maybe I could be the guinea pig for some of you guys to tell you the way you should probably do it. Don't get black because black obviously is dark. Uh, you can't see the figures very well in black bookshelves, bookcases, stuff like that. Go white. It's much better for light. Looks cleaner. Looks more appealing. That's my pro tip uh, on Billy Bookshelves. And those, you know, you can go to Walmart. You can go to Target of the world, probably Amazon. They have cheaper bookcases you can buy that are very similar to Billy Bookcases. The quality is just not as good and... Uh, you know, there's uh, some issues on height and stuff. It's just not as good of a, a bookshelf as the Billy's. I've bought some of those Walmart ones in the past, you know, 20, 25 bucks. It's really worth spending the extra 10, 15 dollars, if you can, to go to get a Billy bookshelf at Ikea. They're much better and they can also be customized. Uh, I'm looking at right now, I need to go for my Marvel Legends room. You could buy an, an extender on the top of each one of those shelves if you got tall enough ceilings. Uh, and that's my plan. I'm going to buy an extender for all those, get new dioramas put in there, and it just made my billies even taller. So there's cool things like that you can do. They're easily customizable. I really recommend the Billy Book shelves. Uh, worth the extra $10, $15. I think they're $50 right now. Uh, really a good deal, and I really strongly recommend those. Um, some of the other things I use, uh, just as far as display is on, is uh, clear floating shelves. I'll try to remember to link. Uh, so I'm going to try to link as much of this stuff as I can in the Amazon so you guys can find it. Because I don't want you guys to have to comment and then me find it in there. I'll put it all in the description. Hopefully. Hopefully I remember to. Uh, but uh, clear floating shelves. I used these a long time ago. I don't have them currently up in my collection. But that is my plan kind of around my Turtle Arcade. I'm looking at maybe some clear floating shelves. There's some nice ones on Amazon you can buy. You can buy non-clear ones. You can buy anything. Go to Home Depot. Go to Lowe's. Uh, go to Amazon. There's all kinds of different clear floating shelves. But I found some uh, nice plastic uh, clear ones that look really cool. I've had them in the past. I'm just waiting to put them back uh, in the future here soon. So that's another plan. And then the final display unit I'm going to talk about is uh, it's in my Marvel Legends collection. It is a, a shelving unit that looks kind of like a fire escape. 
very cool it's supposed to be hip modern you put it over a couch you put some pictures on it and stuff but when i saw it i said holy cow that's a fire escape i can use that for my figures and that's what i did that's up on amazon i think michaels and hobby lobby may have those i know they've had them in the past here and there and amazon goes in and out of stock but i'll try to put a link for that as well i think that's a really cool touch if you have superheroes or even ninja turtles something like that it's a uh, it's not cheap i mean it's anywhere from 70 to 100 dollars for that display unit but it really is awesome it's really a great conversation piece so i really do recommend that as far as shelving um so there you go uh, i'm working on some shelving for the future for 2022 uh, I'm going to do some uh, tests, I'm studying, I'm researching, I'm doing some stuff. I don't want to recommend any of that here, but uh, there'll probably be an update in the future once I figure out the best way to do what I want to do. Future plans, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, don't miss it. <laughs> so there you go. Um, so that's uh, display units in a nutshell. Anybody have any questions, comments out of that, you guys can leave it in the comments below. Next up, how about we move to talking displays, we'll talk stands and risers, and then maybe we'll move into lights after that. But as far as stands, I talk about it all the time. If you guys have watched any of my unboxing videos, you guys know my favorite stand out there. I say it all the time. Spend your money on your figures, not your stands. We're not stand collectors. I don't know anybody that collects stands, even though I feel like I do. I got a million stands around me, but uh, we collect figures and we want to spend the majority of our money on figures. But stands are a necessary evil in the game. These figures won't stand by themselves, especially if you have them on the Say with the Detolf example, they're on the floor, it's wobbly. If somebody runs by, the kids go running by with the dog, things domino over. There's nothing worse than your figure collection domino dominoing on over each other, falling to the floor, and hopefully not breaking a figure. So you need stands when you can to protect your figures, and that's exactly what I do. And you guys know I talk about it all the time. Ringside collectible stands right there. Uh, I like the black and the clear are my preferred two. Just an easy black stand, peg hole. Bam, right there. Uh, ringside Collectibles exclusive. You can only get them on Ringside. And when you go to Ringside Collectibles, use discount code KYLE, K-Y-L-E. Save yourself 10% on your order. These are a great deal. Uh, they're anywhere, depending on a sale, $2.99 to I think $4.99 for a 10-pack. That is truly a good deal. Uh, I love these. They're very versatile. That's the other thing I love about them so much. Obviously, they work for our WWE Elite figures, but I also use them for Marvel Legends. I use them for Masters of the Universe, Masters of the WWE Universe. I use them for my NECA Ninja Turtles. I use them for my Star Wars Black series. I would say about for Marvel and Star Wars, about you know nine out of every ten work with a stand. There's a few molds out there that don't. They do not work for the AEW figures yet, but I've heard Ringside is working on AEW stands uh, for the future. But I can't recommend these enough. I know a lot of people like the NECA stands, but those things are bigger. And I think it's like 10 bucks for like just four or five of those stands. Uh, maybe even more than that. It's just not the best value for me. Uh, and that's my opinion. This is my uh, give and take and what I've tried over the years. Uh, I definitely support the ringside stands. And I think uh, you guys will be thrilled with those as well. So then other stands I use out there is flight stands. A lot of superheroes, Star Wars, a lot of people say, oh, I need flight stands. And flight stands are definitely awesome. I love flight stands. Uh, I do use one. I'm going to butcher the name, but it's like Megavan. Uh, that's what I'm calling it. They're called Megavan now. Uh, they're on Amazon. I'll put the link uh, below. I don't like spending money, as I said earlier, on my stands. I want to spend my f money on my figures. Well, these are fairly economical as far as uh, flight stands go. A little bit versatile. I mean, if you guys are familiar with flight stands, they got the bend in the middle, the bend at the top, the graphs around here, the bends at the bottom. I will say the the only downside to these is you're not going to be able to put Juggernaut in here. You're not going to put in heavy-duty figures in here. They're going to topple over. This is more for your female figures, your smaller, lighter Marvel Legend figures, your Spider-Mans of the world. Uh, and you do have to just set it right. I mean, you can't just think you're going to put them in there and it's going to stay great. You might have to do some angling, some moving, some shaking. But that's the way it goes with flight stands. Definitely, you guys have seen other flight stands probably that go 20 bucks a piece. I mean, it depends how much you want to spend on your stands. Uh, but for me, you know, getting a pack of like 10 of these for 25 bucks suits my needs. Um, there are some heavier duty ones you can get on Hasbro Pulse, for example, that are a little bit bigger and heavier. And there's some really detailed ones out there. But for me, uh, this is the way I go. So that's what I use for stands. The ringside collectible stands and these Megavan stands. So there you go. So how about we do risers? 
Uh, that's the next one. And that's one of the most questions I get the most from people is, Kyle, what do you use on your elites back here in your detolfs? What risers do you use? And it's all down to personal preference. I've tried a ton of different risers over the years, and I've settled on two for my collection, and that's the only ones I'm using. I'm keeping it as uniform as possible. So inside of my detolfs, I use Small Joe's risers. Small Joe's risers, uh, smalljoes.com is the web address to buy these. These fit perfectly inside the detolf. They're made I, exactly to fit, you know, Glass shelf to glass shelf. They fit perfectly. They're clear. I love the clear, especially in a Detolf. I, personally, I don't like the looks of a, a colored riser or anything inside a Detolf cabinet. I just don't. I like the clear. I like the clean. Um, but the one uh, caveat with this is these are expensive. These are some of the most expensive risers out there. But, you know, it goes back to do it right the first time. You might get a colored riser, a black or a white one in here. And you might look at it and say, I just don't like this. Uh, I just don't like this. Then you're going to spend money to buy these or something similar down the road. Do it right the first time if you can. That's just the, the pro tip of this whole video. Try to do it right the first time. You know, if it means saving up to the next paycheck to get something... I would do it. You'll be a lot happier with your collection. You'll be a lot happier with things if you do it right. And these small Joes have never disappointed me. Uh, they come in very handy, but like I said, they are a little bit expensive. Uh, there is other clear risers out there. I know people use cupcake risers, uh, you know, fold risers. I think, uh, you know, like the container store has risers. There's a lot of options you can use, but the cleanliness of this and how they fit exactly, I like a lot. There's some people, depending on what you're displaying in your uh, Detolf, that they don't like the height of these. This is pretty good for me. I, I would take maybe another inch if it was possible, but it's not. These are not made specifically for wrestling toys. I mean, they're, they could be used for G.I. Joe. That's what uh, Small Joe's G.I. Joe, that's what the site is. It's about G.I. Joe stuff. But really like these. Like I said, strongly recommended. I've had no issues with these. I've used them for a lot of years. Uh, probably, and not probably, they are my favorite riser out there, and I strongly recommend those. So that's what I use inside my Detolf cases. Now, when you look at my Jax Ruthless Aggression setup I had, or my Star Wars Black series, um, I've used them in the past, too, for uh, Marvel Legends. I use them for a lot of things, and that is Copco, C-O-P-C-O. -C -O. And I'll link the Amazon link on these. Now, these aren't clear, but these are very cheap. I think the, the smaller one here is like six something, maybe six ninety nine, dollars And then I think it's eight ninety nine dollars for the one that's almost double the size of this. And uh, a Billy bookshelf, you can get the big one and a small one on each shelf. That's the way it works. So it fits out really good. Um, there's always some deals on there, but Amazon, look these up. Copco risers. Uh, not clear, but it's okay because I use these in the white Billy bookshelves, and they blend in very good in the white shelf. So... There you go. That's why I use Copco um, risers. They're actually for uh, kitchen use. You know, they're for spice racks. Is basically what these are. They're for spices and stuff. But uh, I've, I've cleared out a lot of Amazon. Amazon even limited me for a long time. They probably still do from buying all these. I don't think they say, "What does this guy want about fifty of these? Is he going to resell these somewhere? What's his plan?" But no, I got a big collection. I needed all of them. But really strongly recommend these. And then my final thing, my final pro tip on stands is one a lot of people never probably thought of, and I've used this uh, for a long time, and it's uh, baseball card holders. You guys probably collected baseball cards or some kind of card sometime in your life. That's exactly what this is. It's two pieces, you know, they come out. Well, you get two for one. But I use these as risers and stands. Uh, on those Copco ones, I put two together, and I put one of these on the side as a riser. I use these in my Ninja Turtle display as just kind of a, a riser here and there. I use it in my Marvel Legends display. It's clear. It's very cheap. It's obviously used for baseball cards, but it's thinking, what could I get? How could I get a clear stand that's relatively cheap? And this is what came to my mind. Another great pro tip for you Hasbro collectors out there. I know uh, David C. Anderson thought of this, and I thought of this uh, separately. Before we knew each other, we were both doing the same thing. Great minds think alike, I guess. But you can put your Hasbro figures in here. They fit perfectly in here. You put them in there, and bam, you got a, a mini display case. You put them all on the shelf, keep them away from dust, all that kind of stuff. Lock them in. Uh, that is another pro tip for you Hasbro collectors. These are very versatile. I have known that you know baseball cards are crazy right now. These are a little harder to find than they used to be. But I'm sure if you look around at your baseball card shops, hobby shops, Amazon, you can find these out there. Right, next up, we get into lighting. And lighting is an interesting one. It's one I've had probably the most challenges with. Uh, moving and shaking and finding what works, what I like, what I don't like. And then technology. Things are changing in technology all the time and lighting is no different. And that has changed throughout the years 
with my collection. So let's start, I guess, first with the Detolfs right behind me. So originally Detolfs is what I went with was the old school puck lights. I'm sure you guys are familiar with puck lights. How long have they been around now? 15, 20 years maybe? And for the longest time, they were just a game changer. No longer did you have to have things uh, wired in, hardwired by an electrician. You could just plug three AAA batteries in, put them in, it's a tap light. I mean, that's what they were originally called, I think, was the tap light used for old people going to the bathroom at the late night or uh, put in a closet, stuff like that. Um, even once for outside, you know, and uh, you're letting the dogs out in the middle of the night, something like that. So that's what they were. They were basically tap lights. Uh, I got one right here. You guys have seen these before. You just push the push it up. They also have remote ones, stuff like that. And that's what I've used in my Detolfs. I use one on the very top shelf and then the middle shelf. So two for each Detolf. However, you know, they do take batteries. We've talked about it before. Uh, batteries aren't cheap. And guess what? The bad thing about these puck lights is uh, they drain your battery like crazy. Uh, even if you never turn these on, you put batteries in there, you never turn them on, they're constantly draining. You might only use them once or twice. Like me, I don't really sit in my basement with these lights on a whole lot. Uh, very rarely, to be honest with you. Uh, I got a bunch of different lights down here. I really don't need them. But it looked really cool, and that's what I did. And these are fairly inexpensive. I mean, you can get like a five-pack for 15 bucks, something like that. Probably even cheaper if you shop around. Got to get a deal. You guys know how it is. Uh, but then the thing I always say about these two is batteries. I realized real quick these eat batteries like crazy. So I said, got to get a deal. Once again, spend your money on your figures, not your batteries, just like your stands. And if you are smart enough, you're patient enough, you look around, you can get batteries for free. If you play the game right, uh, there's a local uh, Midwest. I don't know how far they go out, but very heavy in the Midwest. Menards, for example, it's like a Lowe's Home Depot, and Lowe's and Home Depot can fit in this question as well. Also, your Harbor Freights of the world. Uh, uh, look in the Sunday ads for these places, and every couple of months, maybe every month, uh, one of them will have 30 pack batteries, you know, $15, but free after rebate. That's when you as a collector, you swoop in and you get your batteries for free. Yeah, you put 15 bucks up front, three weeks later you get the check for 15 bucks, or you get store credit, whatever. Hey, that store credit's great, it's just revolving into your battery buying, is how I do it. Um, so that is a pro tip on batteries, don't spend your money on batteries, they get expensive, they uh, really pile up on you. Um, but I've backed myself into a corner with these Detolfs, I have so many of them. Uh, a lot of people say, well get the strip lighting, you know, wire those in. Well the problem is, you're looking at a strip for every Detolf. There's 28 strips. That's 28 outlet connections. I don't have that many outlets, and I'm not going to have all this crazy cords going everywhere. It's just too much at this point. So these puck lights are great for what they were at the time. Uh, I can't say I strongly recommend them anymore. If you've got just a couple of Detolfs, though, I don't think this is a bad way to go. Uh, like I said, if you're smart, you can get your batteries for free. But this is a, a little older lighting tip. This is a lighting tip five years ago. I would have said, this is what you got to do. Maybe a year ago, this is what you got to do. But things have changed. Things have changed in the lighting game. We've all changed. And I've been promoting this one pretty hard because I'm always looking to update, always looking for the best stuff I can find. And uh, these are called Suzoko LED. I'm butchering it, I'm sure. I'll put the link below. But I have uh, turned a lot of people onto these lights in the last couple of months. Uh, these are what I use in my built-in bookcases in my uh, office with my Marvel Legends. So not the Billy bookcases, the built-ins that are come as part of the home, I guess you'd call it. This is what I use in these. And these are absolutely fantastic. They do not take batteries. They're USB chargeable. They have a magnet on the back. You put the thing in on the shelf, plugs in, you just pull it off, charge it if you need it. Uh, I've gotten about a month worth of use without having to charge them. So they hang out there a long time, a lot longer than the batteries. Obviously, they are more expensive than the puck lights. I mean, they're uh, three times as much as the puck lights, probably for a pack of puck lights. Um, I think you get five in a pack of these. They come in different pack sizes. They're definitely more expensive, but if you don't want to play the battery game and working with the batteries, chasing batteries all the time, uh, you could easily do that. Now, what I'd really like to do for my own collection, and you guys know I always say it on all my videos, spend your money on your figures, not your stands, not your lights. My plan is to maybe move every single one of these Detolfs to these. It's going to be expensive with uh, a five pack at like 50 bucks. I mean, I'm looking at like $600. Maybe I'll uh, put out a little cup and see if you guys will pay for it for me. No, I'm kidding. But uh, I don't know. I kind of want to move to these for all these, but boy, then 
it gets to the thing where they're probably all going to go out of charge at once and I'm going to be charging 50 of these things at once. That would be a whole day's work. I don't know what the answer is, but uh, I definitely, if I'm a new collector getting into the game, I definitely get these USB ones. Uh, the great thing is they also work with a remote. They come with a remote control. Very, very cool. Magnetized, or you can put them on a sticker, whatever you want. Um, but very easy to pull off your display, put onto a charger, put back in. Uh, they come in different colors. Uh, this is like a, you know, they got the yellowish light, back to the old school light, and then they got the clear LED light. Very, very solid. And if you can afford it, I definitely take these over the puck lights uh, every day of the week. So that's these, the Suzoko LED. That's what they're called. So there you go. Let me turn it off. Maybe. There we go. Turn that off. Okay, so that's the lighting. Puck lights, Suzoko LED lights, those are the two main ones. Outside of just your natural lights, uh, I did lighting down here. I got, uh, you know, the cup lights in the ceiling and uh, move those around. Another pro tip I did with uh, my basement is I think you're supposed to have an outlet every eight feet, I believe, is what code is. I'm definitely not an electrician, but I think it's every eight feet. I put an outlet every four feet in my basement. I just knew I needed the power eventually. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of my outlets are covered by these Detolf cabinets, as you can imagine. So there you go. But now we get into my Marvel Legends display case, uh, the Billy Book shelves, uh, where I have the dioramas and stuff. And a lot of people say, how did you light those? What did you do? And I wanted this to be clean. We'll talk a little bit later in the video about the backgrounds and how I did that. But I wanted to really show off those backgrounds. My office is also a little bit dark. I have a, a ceiling fan up in there that has a light, but it's just not enough light. And I used to have black shelving in there, and it really darkened the room up. The room got a lot lighter when I put the white Billy Book shelves in, but it's still not bright enough. And those lights really help light the room. I usually actually use those for like a night light or a, just a light when I'm working in my office all day long uh, for work. So it's a double-edged sword on that. And I wanted something that was hardwired into the wall. I could have went with the rollout tape strips, you know. Uh, those nothing inherently wrong about those. They're just uh, kind of a lot of work. Uh, putting them on there, sticking them, getting them just right. Uh, and then if one goes out, then you're in trouble. I just wanted something to the next level of that. And I did a lot of research on lights. Ikea is my favorite place. You guys know we've talked about my display units there. And I saw some of their closet lighting systems. And it's really funny is I guess great minds think alike. And, you know, I, I think I'm thinking up an idea and somebody else has used it. And I've actually found people on YouTube, actually, that have done this same thing. So you can search for it as well if you want to see their install videos and all kinds of stuff like that. But uh, I came across these Norfly lights. They're called Norfly from Ikea. Uh, and I'll, I got one actually right here. So it's a strip light, but it plugs in. So it plugs in hardwired to a transformer. You plug it into here. You put it into the, here on the end, you put the outlet into the wall. And you can connect, I think, nine of these to one of these. So you got to might have to buy multiples depending how big you want to go. And they come in three different link sizes. Well, this length is perfect for the Billy Bookcase. Fits perfectly. Uh, all I had to do was get, I got command strips. I see people drill into their cases everywhere. What I did is I put the sticker command strips with the Velcro on here, put that up, stuck it in, just had to drill a little hole in the back of the shelf. I wired it into through the shelf and back out to the charger behind, plugged it in the wall and away we went. Uh, so that's what I did with the Norfly lights. I really like the cleanliness and how uniform they look. These are actually made for shelving lights is what they're made for. Uh, you can have remotes attached to these. Really cool, but pricey. I mean, you're looking at, you know, roughly $1,000 for, what, four bookshelves, that is. Roughly four, uh, the four displays I think I put all together, roughly about $1,000. It's expensive, but it goes to do it right the first time. Uh, don't second get your, guess yourself. If I would have went with the Suzoko LED or the puck lights, I probably would have regretted it in the long run just because the LED lights aren't long enough for the shelf. Puck lights eat the batteries, and they're definitely not long enough for the shelf. These worked perfectly, and they look the cleanest, and you really do get what you pay for. So these definitely are not for everybody. Uh, you got to buy the extra systems. There's a lot of stuff that goes along to it, but really fairly easy to put together and do. Uh, I really like it a lot, um, and it came off clean. You've seen the pictures, um, but that's what I use. They're called Norfly lights, and then obviously you got the old school puck lights and the Suzoko LED lights. So you got three little lighting options there. There's plenty of other things you can do. Uh, my furnace room in my collection uh, tour, you guys saw that. You know, furnace rooms are usually kind of dingy. They're not finished. Your furnace is in there. I use that for some of my collection, as you guys saw in the video. One thing I put instead of the three twist lights on the top, just your traditional bulbs, 
you can buy those garage ones. You can get them at Walmart. They're on infomercials all the time. But they uh, twist in just like a regular light bulb. But they got three LED lights that move and adjust. Those brighten up that room fantastically. Uh, I really strongly recommend those. They're like 25 bucks each. I would definitely pick those up uh, if you can find one of those. I think Walmart's had some sales. Amazon has sales on them all the time. But uh, if you're looking for your garage light or a shop light or a furnace room light, that is one really game changer as far as lighting goes. It'll really brighten up that room at a very cheap cost. So there's a little talk about lights. Feel free to hit me in the comments if you have any questions about any other kind of lighting. Uh, but those are my primarily ones I've used my tips and tricks over the years. So then we've got risers out of the way. We've got stands. We've gotten displays. We've gotten lights. What's next? Cleaning. Everybody loves to clean, right? We all want to be a maid. That was what everybody wanted to be. We wanted to be a maid that dust and cleaned all the time. No, we don't. We hate cleaning. I'm no different. I hate cleaning. It's the last thing I want to spend my time on. And one of the questions I get the most about my uh, collection, one of the questions that comes to me is, Kyle, how do you keep it clean? Oh, you must be caked in dust. I mean, I think people think I live in like a dusty storm with boxes. You know, I ah, see you later. I don't clean those boxes up. I just swim through them. I'm like a young Scrooge McDuck. I dive into my empty boxes, swim through upstairs. Uh, no, that's not how it goes. I, I clean those up. But it's really easy to keep. Well, it's not always easy. But here's my tips. Keep, keeping a collection like this clean. Now, the first thing is, hey, I have a newer house. If you have a newer house, housing, like everything, technology's changed. If you're living in an old Victorian mansion or an older house from, you know, the 40s or something, you're playing by a little different set of rules at that point. Uh, you know, houses have been built different, cleaning systems, lighting, you know, dust, and, and, you know, older houses are colder. They're not as insulated. You can update that stuff, of course, but this is a newer house, so you got to go into that. Also, my collection, the majority, outside of my office, which is upstairs, that has all my Marvel Legends, everything else is in the basement. And if you can, that's where you want your collection. You want your collection in a basement. Because, you know, one of the worst things for your collection is natural sunlight. You don't want a lot of sun touching your toys, touching your figures. I see people's collection tours. I see people's collections. And I see a huge open window with no shades, no black curtains, nothing. And lights just penetrating in. It's great. It brightens up your room. It's nice to have that natural lighting, but it's one of the worst things you can do for your figures. Uh, you guys go back to the old Kenner Stormtrooper figures. They uh, decolor over time. Some of that's the degrading of plastic, but a lot of it is they've had natural light on them for so long, the color starts to fade. Maybe you don't notice it, but if you got light shining in, sunlight shining in on your collection, things are going to fade. The card's going to fade over time. It's just science, and we're always a scientific channel here. We're like a young Mr. Wizard. Uh, we, we do some of that kind of stuff from time to time, but you that's why a basement is the perfect place for a collection. And you know, most wives, girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever you got out there, they probably prefer your collection to be in the basement. I know my wife, she really likes her living room, her kitchen, her formal dining room, all that kind of stuff. The bedrooms, she can have all that. You do whatever you want with that. You give me the basement, my office, that's all I need. Everything else, you can do whatever you want with the house, honey. That's another pro tip, pro marriage tip out there. We're, we're covering all the bases. But the basement is where your spouse probably wants your collection anyways. And that's exactly where mine is. So that is one thing. Lighting, you don't want natural sunlight in. And natural sunlight also, when it gets in here, it creates dust. I don't know the scientific component about that. Maybe it's something, I don't know. But sunlight does create dust and dusting. So not having sun in my basement, long story short, keeps the dusting down. But you know what else does? I have a brand new HVAC system. Uh, state of the art, as they all are nowadays. Uh, technology changes with those things all the time. And those are things you only replace every you know, 10, 15, 20 years. Well, I got a brand new one that really keeps down the dust, uh, keeps the house clean, keeps the ducts flowing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then people say, well, you got three dogs. Uh, you got, you know, old, old Lemmy and Domino and then Molly, the forgotten dog. Molly, the old dachshund, 14 years old. She does not come downstairs. She doesn't like stairs, being a dachshund and all. Uh, but Lemmy and Domino are down here with me all the time. Lemmy, every time I'm doing one of these videos, Lemmy is by my feet under the table. There's a little other Easter egg for you. Lemmy is always by my side. But you know what? Lemmy and Domino don't shed. So that really helps. That cuts down. If you have a dog that sheds a ton, you're going to have stuff. You're going to have to vacuum on a really consistent basis. Um, but my dogs don't shed. So that's another uh, great aspect to that. So I don't have to worry about dog hair. But 
Um, one thing I do, so I do have to clean. You do have to dust. Uh, you guys see my Jax Classic Superstars videos every single Tuesday. I've had those on the wall for five years. Uh, as I've went through these, I've dusted them, cleaned them off. There's very minuscule dust on them. Um, but how do I keep them clean? Well, out of this, out of these, my Classic Superstars, everything. There's a few things I use on a, I wouldn't say regular basis. I wouldn't even see a, say a monthly basis. Just every once in a while, I will use. And one thing, very cheap. You guys have seen them before, a Swiffer Duster. Very inexpensive, very easy to find, just nice to have. You know, my retro cards, I can walk by and just, bam, clean those off, dust them off a little bit. We're talking once, maybe every two years, maybe every year if you want. Uh, you can break it up and take it into different sections if you need to, but very rarely do I have to use this, but it's there. You can also use heavier duty ones. If you don't want to throw these away and you're more of a recycler, you can clean these. Uh, I do use these on the fronts of my uh, retros, on the fronts of the Detolf. Every once in a while, once a blue moon, very rarely though. Uh, I don't have to do it. I just don't have a super dusty house because it's in the basement, because I have a really good HVAC system. Um, but if you you know need some cleaning things, those are what I recommend. They don't damage figures really. They're very soft. They can pick up the dust, all that. Another pro tip is, and this is what I use on classic superstars and a lot of things, compressed air. Not just for a keyboard anymore. Good for action figures. You know, you give it a little spray, you spray something on it, uh, it just dust it off. It blows the dust away. Uh, I use these a lot. Um, the dustiest part of my whole house, I'll tell you what, is uh, my entertainment center down here in the basement with the TV. It's that heat from the TV just somehow creates dust and all that. And then the black, obviously, of the entertainment stand. Uh, I use this almost, you know, once a week. I'll just real quick blow it all off. And then I vacuum. Try to vacuum every at least every two weeks in my basement. I have to because of all the figures I open and when I do the old see you later, there's twist ties and stuff all over the floor. So I do vacuum and keep clean. And when you vacuum and keep clean on a regular basis, it stops dust and dirt and dog hair or whatever from traveling up into your collection and uh, getting there. So cleaning's really easy. Don't have to make it hard. But, you know, if you're living in a house that was built in the 30s, you're going to have to clean more. That's just the way it goes. Uh, but my biggest tip, my biggest takeaway from this is don't keep your collection in direct sunlight. It's dangerous. Don't do it. So there you go. Uh, and that's it. Besides, I got one last thing for cleaning. Two last things, I guess. I've talked about these before. They're weather strip for uh, windows, just window piping. I line every single one of my detolfs with this around the, the front of the door. Obviously, there's a door on it. You put this in, it fits that gap right there. It keeps the dust out big time. Uh, there's no hardly any dust in my detolfs. I'm sure you could find some, but I've cleaned them literally like uh, once in the last three, four years, something like that. It's not something you have to do on the regular, and this helps keep stuff out, especially, like I said, if you have a dog that sheds, this is another great one. It'll stop those hairs from getting into your Detolf and dirt and stuff. Very inexpensive. I can go to Home Depot, Lowe's, anywhere, you know, five, six bucks, get one of these. Uh, about one pack of these probably uh, gets you about two Detolfs, so pretty cheap. See you later. There it goes. That's a pro tip. And then I really do like Pledge Multi-Surface. I do use this for a lot of my bookshelves and stuff, and I also spray some on a paper towel, light misting, and that's what I use to wipe down my classic superstars. As I've been going through these videos, I've given them a nice shine up before the video. You know, the tops get dusty on those. Just a quick paper towel, very easy, very cheap, and I love that you can use it for anything. So there you go, that's the pro tip, and that's it on cleaning. So now we got dioramas. I'm going to talk about Marvel Legends dioramas. And then I'm also going to talk about uh, a few notes and things to finish up the video. So we're almost done. All right, guys. We've talked about displays. We've talked about stands. We've talked about cleaning. We've talked about risers. We've talked about lighting. Now I want to talk briefly, as I had a whole video on this on the channel, you can easily go back and look. It's a much more detailed description and talk about. But I know a lot of questions come up about where did you get those dioramas for your Marvel Legends display uh, in your office? Very cool. I absolutely love those. If you guys think back to my 2020 display tour, not the new one, but the 2020, I had Kalex, easy for me to say, cube shelves for my Marvel Legends. And something always irked me about that display. It was good. It held a lot of figures for sure, as you guys can see in that video. But there was something around it. Part of it was, which started me thinking, was the brown, dark uh, wood. Uh, and I want white. White is clear. You can see it better, stuff like that. And then I said, it's out too deep. I need more bookshelves. So that's where I went to the Billy Bookshelves, got white Billy Bookshelves, brought them in. And I said, okay, what can I do here to make this different? I don't want guys just standing on a shelf. 
I don't mind it for wrestling. The army uniform look, I think, looks really good for wrestling figures. But something about Marvel Legends just doesn't look right to me. Uh, I said I need more of a dynamic pose, a diorama. Instead of guys just standing around, standing in order, let's have some scenes on here. And I said to myself, I also need these scenes to be stuff I can move around and change. I don't want to lock myself into a certain scene outside of a couple of shelves. And I'll talk about that briefly. Uh, I wanted to lock it in. didn't want to lock it into a scene. I wanted something generic, like a prison unit or a street or a street scene, stuff like that. And that's what I did. So I started researching. And there is a Facebook group out there called Kamix, C-A-M-I-C-S, I believe it is. And they have free downloads that rotate all the time that you can use for free to print out. So I took some of those, got those printed out as well. But then I found our old pal, that backdrop guy, makes backdrops for Detolfs, all kinds of stuff. Did my Ninja Turtle backdrops. Uh, that's why I went to that backdrop guy on Instagram. Check him out. Give him a follow. Tell him old Kyle sent you. Um, but I, hey, I said, hey, I know you can do this. I know you can help me with this. I'm an idea guy. I'm an idea guy at work. I think up promotions. I think up things. Uh, I used to execute it back in my younger days. Now I let the front line hopefully execute that kind of stuff. Uh, but I've always kind of been that way. I'm a big idea guy. And then I find somebody that's going to be able to do it right that's the best in the game. And that's where that backdrop guy comes in. So I said, here's my thoughts. I got, you know, 27 shelves, let's say it is. 28 shelves, whatever it was. Here's my idea. Here's what I want. And I got some of them from the Camix group that I use that are free of charge. Anybody can get those and print those out, so go to that group. Uh, but also, I said, hey, I need some more stuff. I need a, a park scene. I need this. And that backdrop guy has access to millions of photos. Uh, you know, he pays for a photo membership to this stuff and can get almost anything he wants. So he comes back with, here's a laboratory, here's a laboratory. Which one do you like? Which one do you like? Bam, I like that one. That's what I picked out. Then I had to measure the shelves to get the diorama just right. You had to me measure the floor, the walls, the sides, uh, the ceilings if you'd want one. So I came back with my measurements and back and forth, back and forth. I mean, it was a lot of work between us. I think I talked to him more than my wife uh, for a couple of weeks, but we got it all figured out. He uh, got me the charges. I used, you know, you can use heavy duty paper, thinner paper. You got to go wherever you want to go. It depends how thick you want. I didn't want too thin that it looked like paper, but I didn't want it too thick that it was like as thick as cardboard. Found a paper size in between, went from there. So it was a lot of work, but very, very well done. Uh, I always say it, do it right the first time. I didn't want to have to do something, you know, try to do it with my own printer, print it out, take all this time. Spent the money to do it right. It wasn't cheap. Nothing's cheap if you do it right. If you take the cheap way out, it usually doesn't work out and you're not happy with it. Um, but you just got to work at it and look at it and figure out what you want. Um, I just chose those dioramas. There's plenty of other things. Use your imagination. You know, you can do whatever you want. You could get a, a nice Star Wars Hoth scene, uh, stuff like that. There's all kinds of stuff you could get done. Uh, and that backdrop guy was the guy that helped make it a reality, and I worked with him. But if you want to do uh, stuff like that, you can easily do that on your own at a much cheaper. If you buy Marvel Legends, they come with backdrops all the time, like a hanger backdrop you could use. Uh, just a classic X-Men backdrop. We talk about it on our unboxings. See you later. See you later. We talk about it all the time. Those are freebie. A lot of people save those things. You can, and you can piece those together in different shelf sizes, stuff like that. Uh, very easy to do. So use your own imagination. Figure it out. Uh, but that's how I did it. And like I said, there is a long-form video on my channel. Look it up. Uh, on my Marvel Legends diorama, how I did all that, measured it out, and all that fun kind of stuff. So I wanted to touch base on that. And then just a couple of housekeeping notes at the very end. Uh, we talked about sunlight. That's one thing you guys should take away because I do see, and people do send me a lot of collection pictures, like, hey, here's my collection. They'll send me a message or something. And I usually say, hey, that's a great collection. It looks awesome. And most of the time, they actually do. They do look really good. And I love seeing collection because it gives us all ideas, gets the wheels spinning. But that's one thing I see is the sunlight. That's a big no-no. Watch out for that if you want to keep these things long term. You've got to keep it out of sunlight. Classic superstars. My classic superstars room. My secret door that I built. The secret room for the jacks layer. Uh, everybody says, how do you have those jacks up on the wall? Simple as push pins. Clear push pins. Can't see them. I don't stick them through the figure. There's a J-hook on there. They hook on. I've been using them forever. I've been using them uh, with my dad back in the 90s with starting lineups. This is the way we did things. We still do it today. Uh, some people don't like them. They're cheap. They're inexpensive. I don't have any damage of the figures from them. 
then people say, well, there's those pinholes on there. You're going to fill all those holes. Not really. Have you guys ever painted a wall before? One brush stroke covers up those little pinholes. It's not like a huge nail hole or anything like that. That's a pro tip there. I think sometimes we overthink the way we kind of hang things. I've seen people hang big command hooks, you know, that you hang mops and stuff on. You don't need to get that high. Simple push pin, save you a lot of money in the long run. People ask about display cases, protector cases for their figures. Uh, Ringside Collectibles, once again, discount code KYLE, save 10% of Ringside Collectibles. They have defenders for every wrestling figure under the sun. ZoloWorld.com, He-Man defenders. Uh, there's a defender for everything out there. Ringside has AEW defenders. There's Marvel Legend defenders. I'm not sure if there's G.I. Joe classified defenders yet, but I guarantee they're coming soon if they're not here already. Uh, that's one pro tip. You want to keep your things nice a long time. If you're worried about somebody bumping into them, something like that, use these cases. They might cost you 10 bucks, but you got to chase, let's say you got to chase Cody Rhodes, one of 100. You probably should invest the $10 and get something like this. Uh, that's a pro tip you definitely want to do. See you later. Um, so there's just that. Another thing is uh, I do get questions every once in a while. What do you do about loose joints? Uh, you guys know I've been working on a Jack's Ruthless Aggression display forever. And one thing that really annoys me is loose joints. We've seen it on G.I. Joe figures. We've seen it on all of our figures. And one thing I use is this Kiki Fix Loose Joints. Uh, it's just a little bottle, a little squirt, little applicator. But you put it on that joint that's loose, and then you work the shoulder. You work it for a minute or so, and it hardens and thickens up and fixes that loose joint. So that's one thing I've been using over the last year to pretty good success. A few of those ruthless aggressions, there's no coming back from. But uh, there, that's uh, one you can use out there. That's a little pro tip uh, if you're ever looking for uh, something to fix your loose joints. That's just one thing, because I do get that question a lot as well. And we talked about the other question about stickiness on figures, putting the plastic on it, remove the plastic, it counteracts. I don't know how it works, but it does. You might have to do it every couple of years, maybe, depending on the plastic, but that's the best thing I've found that works. One thing I forgot to mention in the display case portion uh, that we talked about, people say, hey, what are those Hasbros? You have your Hasbros on the wall on display. What is that? Well, I have one extra. And it is a baseball bat holder display. They fit perfect for retros, Hasbros, Galoobs, uh, smaller figures. Micro brawler, brawlers would fit in here. Uh, very cool. It's a baseball bat display. That's literally what it is. It's got a hinge. It folds up. Uh, very clean, very classy. I wish they were white. They only come in black. You can get these at Michael's Hobby Lobby. I'm sure Amazon sells them. Uh, pro tip out there, Michael's Hobby Lobby, don't ever buy anything there without a coupon. Go to their website. There's always a 15% coupon, or these are on sale probably once a month. Buy one, get one half off, stuff like that. They're a little expensive, but you shop around, you wait a couple of weeks, you can get a deal. Uh, I have one extra because I was planning for the future with retros. I was buying them up on sale, and then retros stopped. So if retros ever do come back, I got one more case to go, uh, luckily. So I won't have to buy on there. So there's that. I wanted to touch base on that for my Hasbros and Galoobs and stuff. That's what I use for those. And then the biggest takeaway, I've said it a few times in this video, is really work You work your plan and just uh, stick to it. That's the thing. Do it right the first time. Plan your work. Plan it out. Don't be kamikaze. That's what I tell a lot of people every day in my day job. I tell my wife all the time, have a plan. Think what you want to do. Step back. Don't get caught in that FOMO. Don't get caught in the impulse world we live in. Try to think to the future. Try to save yourself some money. Got to get a deal. What's going to be the cheapest way, but the best way in the long run for you to do it right? If there's any tips, I, I would say use that tip for everything you do in life. If it's buying a car, buying a house, buying your groceries, buying your figures, buying your displays. Got to get a deal. Save your money. Be on the lookout for stuff. Um, and just do it right the first time. So there you go. I know there was a lot to take in, but I knew these questions would come, and I figured I could do a video that's kind of a video B to my collection tour. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that collection tour. Hopefully you're subscribed to the channel by now. If not, please subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like. And then if you have any questions, I'm very uh, easily accessible via Twitter at SirPaul64, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. Uh, you know, I'm very easy to get a hold of. If you got a question, something I didn't cover here, definitely watch this whole video because I think I cover pretty much everything. But if you got some question outside of that, feel free to hit me up on the comments for YouTube. Whatever it takes to get a hold of me, uh, I will give you an answer personally from whatever I think the answer is. So there you go. But make sure you subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, belowthecollar.com, get your very own See You Later t-shirt. Support the channel. 
all the programming. You guys know we got videos every single day. So I appreciate you guys all watching. I hope you enjoyed the collector's tour. I hope you enjoyed some of these tips. These are just my pro tips as a lifelong collector. Stuff I do. I'm sure it'll change. It's always improving, always getting better. And we'll see what changes come in the future. But until next time, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.